Hi guys, in this video series we are looking about the op-amp and also we have learned some applications of op-amp. In this video we are going to learn about how op-amp works as inverting terminal, inverting amplifier and also we are going to do one questions from that. And if you are new to the expected channel, please don't forget to subscribe it and also I have already I posted many videos regarding this and I have given the link in the description so if you like to watch them please do watch so here as I have already mentioned here we are going to learn about how op-amp work as inverting amplifier in the name itself you can easily figure it out it's going to be amplify the signal if you are providing an input it's going to amplify the signal and also it's going to invert which means if you are providing a phase difference of zero, a phase of zero, it will provide with a phase difference of pi. So that's known as inverting. If the phase difference is zero from, from between input and output voltages, we are going to tell as it's an inverting signal. So that here we are going to learn an inverting and also it's going to amplify this input signal so let's mark from the beginning and figure it out what are the equation we can derive if they have provided the circuit so when you are considering about the non inverting sorry an inverting amplifier as i have already previously mentioned that we can call this port as this is connected to minus so we are going to write it as v minus this is going to be v plus i have already mentioned we can call this terminal minus terminal as non-inverting terminal so the reason i have already mentioned that we will look at that in the later video so here we are going to look at why we are going call calling that v minus that minus terminal as inverting terminal so here we have I have we are going to learn about inverting amplifier so for that inverting amplifier you need to connect this input to this minus terminal that's why we are calling this minus terminal as inverting terminal so if you are going to get an inverted signal amplified signal you need to connect this input for this minus signal so that's the reason we are going to call as inverting terminal this minus is known as inverting terminal in the other side the plus is known as non-inverting terminal that video we will look at that chapter in the next video so let's mark it as this v minus and here i have grounded v plus so you can always take in the other side too if you want to take if you like to change this side you can actually put v plus in the upside and here as minus but the thing is you need to actually change hold the circuits downside because here the thing is you need to connect this my input to this negative terminal so that's the main consider a uh, concern with these things so here we have provided a negative feedback so this is a circuit for uh, having an amplification inverting application so here we have provided a negative feedback if you don't know the term feedback please refer the previous video i have posted so feedback simply means we are going to get connect this get some output value uh, get some voltage value from the output to input so here this is going to be input so we are going to get some voltage value for this for this input value so if you are giving a negative feedback we actually learned that if the op-amp will equate these two values but we actually knew that the v plus is going to be zero always because we have ground that from that we can tell the v minus is going to be zero the reason is we actually knew that if you are uh, giving a negative feedback for that op amp it will make the plus side and the minus side as equal from that if we need to ground this uh, plus terminal positive terminal so that we can directly tell the negative terminal is going to have the zero as voltage so if you are having this kind of a circuit you can directly tell it's going to be zero so and also you can directly tell if 
we are providing some current from this side b i the whole current will go through this can anyone tell the reason why can't it go through this one if no can you figure it out the reason please pause the video and try to know on so most probably you have found out that the reason is we have already learned that op amp won't get any current from this input so that it won't get any current so let's cut it off so here when you are providing a current what will happen to that current it is will go through this duct, this direction so here we are going to use the Kirchhoff's voltage laws and we need to find the relationship between v naught v output and v input so can you try here we knew that the voltage is zero what's the relationship between this v i r i and i i we can directly use this ohm's law and we can directly write v i minus zero is equals to the voltage difference is equals to current into a uh, uh, resistor of that likewise if you want you can try it for if also so here we knew that this is going to be v naught and this is going to be zero if i use this in this direction it's going to be v output minus zero is going to be equals to if current is in the same direction if f into rf but we knew that i i is equals to minus i f the reason is we are going to have the same current is going to, through the r i is going to be same through this r f but the direction is different because we have denoted in the minus direction so we have just denoted in this side we will normally take like that but actually it's current is going through this side so what you can do is you can tell i i is equals to minus i f so if you substitute over here i i is going to be v i over r i likewise minus i f is going to be equals to v naught over r f so if you simplify that the v output would be equals to so v out over v i let's take like that it's going to be equal to minus r f over r i so that output over input is known as voltage gain so the voltage gain is going to be v naught minus v input but the thing is that's going to be equals to minus rf over ri so if you want to figure it out the voltage gain what's the output voltage if you are providing a certain voltage over here you can directly use this equation minus rf over ri here you can see it's going to be minus the reason is it will going to invert that signal it should be giving a pi phase difference and you can find out this rf value they will all directly provide and ri value and you need to substitute all the things and get the abd so this is the equation you can directly memorize and use if they ask the question from inverting amplifier so let's look at an a question so that you can easily understood these things so this is a question here we are having the rf as 40 kilo ohms and ri the input impedance as 10 kilo ohm for this one we are additionally connected to this one and also we are providing an input signal of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.2 sine omega t so here you need to the first question is you need to find this v output first so please pause the video and try it in your own and after that you need to find the input current we are providing from that you need to find the input power the power we are going to give from this input side so you need to find this input power and also you need to find the output power from these two you need to find what's the amplification of that power what's the application of that signal in the in terms of power so you need to find these two, five values i think so please pause the video and try it in your own So hope you have 
figure it those so let's start from the beginning so how to find this v node actually we knew that if you are having an inverting amplifier you can directly write the voltage gain would be equals to bi sorry b o minus b i anyhow it's going to be equals to minus r f over r i we actually knew the value of r f is going to be 40 kilo ohms here it's going to be minus 40 over divided by 10 so you can directly tell it's going to be minus 4 so these are the things so if you knew that it's going to be minus 4 you can directly tell v naught is equals to minus 4 into v i so directly you can write minus 4 into this v i it's going to be minus 2 and this is 0 0.8 sin omega t i hope this is clear for you v naught is equals to minus 2 minus 0 0.8 sin omega t then how to find the input current so you can use this ohm's law over here it's going to be bi is equals to current into r so if you subject this i you are going to get the bi here we already knew this vi is going to be 0 0.5 plus plus 0 0.2 sin omega t and also divided by this r it's going to be 10 kilo ohm so you can divide it that and you are going to get the answer if you divide it by 10 and if you bring that kilo over there in the upside you are going to get milliampere the answer in milliampere it's going to be 0 0.05 plus 0 0.025 sin omega t into milliampere so this is the thing so here we have also uh, found out these things and the next thing is we need to find the input power so here something different you need to think about here we are going we are having two types of thing one is pi with the dc voltage and the ac voltage which means it's going to change it's like this but when you are considering about the power you can't directly calculate this so what you are going to do is you can you actually knew that the power is equals to voltage into input but you can't directly multiply these two values because this voltage is in dc and this current is having dc and ac so what we are going to do is we will take the dc power separately likewise we are going to get the ac power separately so for that how to find the power of dc is we actually know what's the dc value of the voltage the dc part it's going to be 0 0.5 v into I, the DC value of this I, the DC current is going to be 0 0.5, which means you are going, sorry, it's going to be 0 0.05. So we are providing the DC current as 0 0.05, a constant current. With that, what we are additionally leaving is an AC current. It's going to fluctuate like this. So how to calculate the power of this one is, First of all, we need to find this voltage, the RMS voltage of that. It's going to be V max over root 2. So it's going to be 0 0.2 sin omega t divided by root 2. So we knew that the V max is going to be the maximum voltage would be 0 0.2 of this voltage and divided by root 2. Likewise, you need to find the value for I2, the AC current. If you figure it out, it's going to be I maximum, which is going to be 0 0.2 divided by the value root 2. So this is the IRMS value of that AC signal. So he, from that, 
now we have found out this rms value for both things and what you can do is you can directly sorry this is going to be 0 0.02 to 5 i yes this is 0 0.02 so what you can do is you can directly tell it's going to be vrms into irms which is going to be 0. Point, i have made a mistake and i know that's correct 0 0.02 into root 2 so this is the power of the ac signal ac input signal and this is the power we are providing for dc input signal but always remember here we are giving a mixture of ac and dc that's why we are calculating this separately and filling out this answer likewise you need to calculate for output power individually for ac and dc and you can combine those things once you found out this output power you can directly get the gain the power gain by dividing p naught by pi i hope this makes sense so if you're having any doubts please come to it below thank you for watching